All right, today is the day, and we have been slammed around here with a lot of work on the outside, designing a couple of houses, a little work on Leviathan, remodeling a bathroom, and other duties of uh, my professional life. So we have just a quick video today, kind of jumping back to something that we just uh, visited just a few videos ago, and that was uh, working on laminating the front hood or the bonnet, front clamshell. Anyway, I've done some more reinforcing to that, had to do some trimming. We'll talk about that. So anyway, let's go take a look at the work we did. The last time you saw some work done on the hood, the bonnet, front clamshell, whatever we're going to call this thing, I put a couple of uh, foam ribs in to do some strengthening. We're going to multiply that with some new ones, a little bit smaller and thinner, but I'm laying them out here. And this time we're going to create them out of uh, microspheres filled epoxy mixed up to nice and thick, put it in a bag and kind of extrude it out like cake frosting. And then before I've used a piece of peel ply to form it, flatten it out, round it out nicely, but that did not work. It seemed to be sticking to the peel ply too much that so it wouldn't flatten out right. So I just uh, formed it with a tool. And once it's secure, the next day I'm gonna go back and sand it to shape. A Little more work with the sanding, but I can get the exact shape I want this way. So I wanna cut these things to be nice, gentle, curved, rounding shape with a good transition taper right up against the old fiberglass layer. And of course, we'll uh, scuff up that fiberglass as well so that we get a good bond at the next fiberglass sheet. So a nice sanding job, get them nice and smooth. And we'll uh, then take it and uh, jump over and trim out one of the old foam ribs. Found out once I got the hood put on, that this kind of had a little interference fit problem against the dashboard that runs underneath this front bonnet where the windshield goes under. So we had to trim a little piece out here. So cut the fiberglass away, sand the foam out, and we'll later on uh, relaminate those and try to get some of the strength back into those uh, ribs. Once I got this all prepped up, ready to go, vacuum it out, clean it up really well, make sure I've got it all scuffed up, sanded where it needs to be. And then I'm gonna take it over and just as I had that one problem, test fit it once more. And it looks like the, the large foam that I cut out fits good, but it looks like there's still a little bit of a fitment problem and trying to figure out what it is. And I discovered that the, the new microsphere filled epoxy ribs that I'm creating on this episode were hitting the dashboard as well in one little spot on each side. So take my little oscillating saw, trim it out and give me some sandpaper and sand off all of it down right to the fiberglass. Looked like I had about a quarter of an inch thickness there that I could clear, but that foam, was, the rib was too much where a few layers of fiberglass, not gonna be a problem. So get all my fiberglass and uh, have a couple strips of Kevlar we're gonna add to this lamination as well. Now, as we jump into talking about doing the lamination here, you've heard me talk so many times in different episodes about doing lamination. We're gonna talk a little bit different this time. And that is that the front lip of this uh, bonnet, the clamshell here, gets pretty thin, not, not in the laminations, but in the piece of the part, right where the, op the hole is for the radiator and the air ducts for the brakes. It gets down to be a pretty thin, thin structure, a little turn back. That's only about a quarter of an inch gap in there. So to add strength to this, make sure I didn't hit a rabbit or something and tear things up up there. I'm going to throw that Kevlar in there to hold things together. If there ever was a problem of a little front end impact, of course, a major front end impact or even rear ending somebody would do serious damage to this piece and I'd have to probably just build it over. But that Kevlar is going to add a bunch of uh, strength to hold things together if there was any kind of impact in the front there. So you missed the, me doing the lamination of the Kevlar in the video. I didn't catch that, I guess, but after I had that in there, I'm going to start putting fiberglass to kind of uh, wrap it in, tie it into the rest of the structure. So over the Kevlar and then over that uh, foam rib. And once I have a couple layers of that down, then I'm going to go to a larger sheet. The larger sheet is not, of course, just going to add more strength in total to this thing, but it also is the larger the sheet, the less seams you have and the nicer, the prettier smooth surface you get. So trying to use the largest sheet as you can. This one here, actually able to use a full width sheet, but just going back to those uh, vent holes because they're such compound shapes, you have to trim around them anyway. And as we're working our way back, 
you know, start covering those uh, newly formed uh, ribs that we've created out of our microsphere filled epoxy. Go back, put a couple of layers on them in the, as just strips. And once I got two layers of fiberglass on just the strips, then I'll go to uh, some larger sheets as well. Now here, repairing that uh, rib that I had to trim out. Um, threw down a, a twill fabric so that it conforms to that. So a couple little sharp edges on those, a little sharper than the fabric really wants to conform to. So I put, let's add a twill down and then I'll switch and go for the next layer. I'll go with a, a plain weave. That way it gives me a little more time to work around with the plain weave and uh, and it seemed to bond a little better to a new fabric, like the twill underneath it, rather than to the hard surface of the fiberglass. And that's what you need for this uh, plain weave is something for it to adhere to a little more cohesive action to hold it in place while it cures. And then we'll keep adding, like I said, larger sheets go around. Most of this uh, lamination was three layers in the fender area here, going where the tire is going to be. There was four layers and actually five around the little turn back because I really want to build up the lip where the tire will be if, you know, somehow the bump stops and the suspension didn't quite catch it and it went up and hit the bodywork. That's where it would be. We need some strength in there just for, I guess, rock chip throws and things like that as well. So strengthen up there about five layers. Now I will be adding more layers to this thing. This is not the final lamination on this thing. We still need to add uh, some hard points for the hinges up towards the nose and then some hard points for the latch mechanism back towards the pointy ends that close close to the A pillars. But we're getting this thing pretty well laminated. At least one side's almost done here. Now, one last thing to strengthen this front lip where we put those Kevlar strips in. I mixed up some uh, Kevlar pulp or a milled Kevlar into kind of a paste and I'm going to pack it into that little groove. Um, even with that little, there's still the quarter of inch, like quarter by a half inch gap in the front there. And I thought I'd just fill it with this stuff. And then once it gets all sanded down, ground down nice and straight, then when you reach into that grill opening, you won't have a sharp edge of the fiberglass behind there as well. It'll be a I said like a half inch by quarter inch filled little box in there. In fact, I'll kind of pull back here in just a moment in this video to show you what I'm talking about in that front edge. Be trimmed up and look nicer later on. And as to finish off this video, we're going to go back in and try it in place once again. And I didn't have time to go further in this lamination, but this is what we're doing now is uh, putting in some little template pieces that I need to build a air dam to force air coming through the radiator to go through these little vent holes, these little nose holes that will be cut out. Anyway, you'd tape this three by five card in place while it was underneath, or while I was reaching underneath the car. And again, run over and try it again after I just trimmed it. It looks like I've got about another inch to go in my trimming. And once I trim it here, then it fits right up against the aluminum sheet metal of that craft structure we built in a previous episode. That'll keep the air between those two crash structures going through the radiator and then up through those nose holes. Now, it's not going to help too much to just have a little card like that on both sides, which I need to duplicate on the other side. But I'm also going to build a template for uh, a little air dam to go between the nose holes. So in the end, when that bonnet closes, the clamshell comes down, the radiator air will have to travel through the radiator, through those nose holes. Although there will be a slight gap above them and that extra air can travel past these nose holes and then go up and exit out onto the windshield. We just don't want all that air going across the windshield. I guess in actuality there will be some that will escape by the sides and go out the wheel well as well. But anyway, that is our lamination for today. Well, that piece is getting a little closer. I think one more time, as I mentioned, coming in there and putting the hinge mounts, um, latch down mechanism, and that deflector for those uh, vent holes. It will be just about done in the laminations. 
a little cleanup from the releasing agent off the outside surface and some touch-ups and that thing will be ready to set aside for uh, getting prepped for painting. Anyway, thanks for stopping by today and come back and see us again.